Good day everyone, welcome to a new update and today we're going to have an interview with Orion Protocol and especially Timothy Horwell. We're going to discuss what Orion is going to do in general for the entire industry, why Orion is so important for um, the cryptocurrency markets, how are they going to integrate the liquidity from a DEX or a SEX, uh, what issues those have, why Orion is a bridge for that in general and what different um, integrations they have inside the protocol and the platform in itself and where we are heading with the entire market so let's get to the interview do not forget to enjoy it and also do not forget to subscribe beneath so enjoy um, so as you've heard in my introduction today i'm joined with orion protocol and it's timothea horrell Am I saying it correctly? You are well, saying it correctly. Well done. Five thank points. you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on here. Um, before we're going me. to start, um, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your background. So mm -hmm. what have you been doing before blockchain? What has brought you into the blockchain space? And yeah. why Orion? Good question. So as you said, I'm Timothea and I'm CMO of Orion Protocol. And I have spent the last decade or so working across the mobile data and payment space. Uh, so, you know, working with either startups or through to global conglomerates. So um, building business strategy at a startup incubator through to head of research and marketing at Telefonica. So kind of a, a broad range of experience there, but at Telefonica in particular, we were looking at blockchain as a solution to the opacity of the ad tech industry uh, from about 2017 or so. So I would always be going to conferences to kind of stay up to date. You know, I don't think blockchain will ever solve the opacity of the of the ad tech industry purely because there are too many um, players who don't don't want that to happen. But um, it was at one of these conferences that I actually met the Orion team. So uh, we met in 2019 and the, the team were and are led by Alexi Koloskov, the creator and chief architect of the Waves deck. So and also the, the single most intelligent human I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I met them, I was just really taken aback by how simple the idea of what they were building was, but yet so vast, you know, creating one portal to the entire crypto market. Um, but in a totally decentralized manner. So I've been with them ever since. Well, it sounds really simple, but there are still very complex <laughs> issues involved with the, uh, exactly. with the project. Um, yeah. So you've touched on it, but what is the Orion protocol and what are you trying to solve in mm. general? What problems do you try to solve with the project? Well, the digital asset market, while it's obviously grown significantly in recent years, is still in its infancy so it's still you know in comparison to traditional capital markets in critical need of liquidity and I think we've reached a point of peak fragmentation of the industry you know, we have increasingly different asset types across different exchanges built on different blockchains and this results in these like siloed pools of liquidity without the infrastructure to really bridge them together and so, you know, as such, there is no single point of access to the crypto market, whether it's centralized or decentralized. Um, so that single point of access is what we are building. It's basically a decentralized portal to the, the digital asset market. And obviously that, as you said, is no small feat. There's a lot involved in that. Um, and we, we haven't aggregated the market in its entirety yet. I don't, you know, the market is ever expanding. So I think that will be a um, you know, a never ending challenge, but you know, what we have done arguably is achieve the hardest part because centralized exchange aggregators have existed that are custodial and uh, DEX aggregators and swap pool aggregators have existed. But again, there's this, kind of, this divide between centralized and decentralized liquidity. So we, for the first time, are providing decentralized access to centralized liquidity. So Right now on Orion Terminal, you can trade across the likes of Binance, KuCoin, Bitmax, and we're adding more all the time, but directly from your wallet without the need for KYC, without the need for any account on any of those exchanges. So I think that in itself is a really incredible achievement. And, and from there, we're going to work to, you know, to pull in DEXs, uh, swap pools, so that we do get to that point of aggregating the whole market into one place so yeah 
sorry yeah i mean um i've got so many questions regarding um, um the non kyc stuff i mean mm-hmm. i'm in the netherlands yeah. and uh, i see the conversation that they have with your regulators that everything is just uh, pretty much a shit show yeah, um yeah but right now we have the overall markets of a dex and a sex and mm. Uh, we used to have taxes in 2017 as well with Ether Delta, and that's that's just that was just nonsense. <laughs> what do you see with the market right now? I in taxes have some issues, a sex has an yeah. issue as well. What are the biggest flaws right now, and what are the benefits from these two? Do you believe? Well, I suppose our goal was to kind of to create the benefits from both sides. So you know we are building on decentralized technology in terms of custody and settlement. And then as I said, pulling in the, the liquidity itself from centralized players. I think, you know, when, when we first launched in 2018, we, we wanted to bridge this gap because 95% of liquidity was held on, on centralized exchanges. But I feel like centralization is you know, inherently anti-crypto. And this is supposed to, these are supposed to be the very entities that we are opposed to and that we are kind of building a new structure to go against. Um, so, you know, uh, plus the fact that you know, in, in the wake of, even just since our, our TG, the amount of exchange hacks that have occurred, um, people are increasingly averse to keeping their, their assets on the centralized exchange and you know, perhaps rightly so. Um, so, you know, DEXs have grown in popularity, but I think ultimately they still lack sufficient liquidity. So you've got high slippage, you know, um, even poor user experience often, front running. So what we're trying to do is take the pros from either side and combine it into one solution there. So. And um, right now we also see that there's, there's, there's tons of exchanges being worked with. I mean... Binance is one of the largest right now, but you've got Uniswap, SushiSwap, everything is popping up right now. We've got like 40 exchanges right in the current landscape. Yeah. Do you believe that we actually need so many or should we be beneficial for like three or four exchanges and use them instead of all those 40, 50 exchanges that we have right now? Well, it's hard, isn't it? Because the less you have, the more monopoly someone has over the market. I don't think there's a huge issue in having lots of different um, lots of different exchanges as long as there is a way to pull the liquidity into one place. So, um, you know, I, from our perspective, we are not stealing market share from any of these entities by aggregating them. We're providing another point of access to their liquidity. For centralized exchanges, that's, you know, that's a decentralized point of access without them needing to build the necessary infrastructure. So, um, I, I suppose it, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because every exchange is trying to offer everything now. <laughs> so whether it be, you know, their infrastructure, they're growing the breadth and the depth of their offering. Uh, so I'm sure we will end up seeing, you know, a, smu- a, a few larger players as, as we already do see, but um, I, I, I still think they'll, you know, through aggregation, there'll still be a, a use for for smaller exchanges that, that lack that kind of liquidity yeah and right now we have one large exchange which is binance and still has the monopoly yeah <laughs> so <exactly. laughs> we don't want yeah. to have that either but um and it's now the, monopolizing the infrastructure through binance smart chain as well <laughs> so. yeah i mean that's the nature of a market so yeah. that's always how it should or how it's going to happen yeah either way um then the question becomes, you said you're going to combine sexes and dexes and provide liquidity for them both. So you want to be an all-around, all-around protocol platform. Yeah. The first real question everybody that's listening is asking themselves is, well, a dex is not KYC, non-KYC, and a sex, you have to do that. How are you going to combine those funds and solve Good. that issue? And I guess everybody is asking you about that. All the time. Yeah, so this is all made possible through our our basically a proprietary governance mechanism delegated proof of broker. So this is built on a network of brokers and stakers that fulfill every function on on the protocol. So uh, brokers either with exchange accounts or exchanges themselves, as is the case for uh, Bitmax, KuCoin, MXC, Injective and, and others, they actually run Orion broker software and 
Uh, this allows their computers to automatically execute trades rooted via um, rooted from the liquidity aggregator by their trading accounts. So they are then chosen to execute the trades based on how much ORN they have staked. And um, essentially, they these brokers are the ones who conduct KYC on the traders' behalf. They never get access to, to traders' funds, obviously, as, as everything is enforced um, in, in our smart contracts. But so yeah, only if the order is filled will the broker actually, um, will the transfer of assets occur atomically in the, in the smart contract. So all of that is, is, is thanks to our, our network of brokers who are carrying out KYC on behalf of the end user. And given that the majority of them are, are the exchanges themselves, um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Well, that's, 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 I mean, well, that's a good thing, right? Um, yeah. Everybody and most, of, <laughs> and most of the exchanges and especially uh, the gateway between VIA to crypto is just having very much trouble right now with all the regulations kicking in. Yeah. And I think there's also still a big question regarding user experience. Um, the most I hear is that Binance is quite complicated for new people jumping into the markets, but then they don't even know about the DEX, which is even more complicated and also has massive fees, uh, especially if you use it on Ethereum network. Um, yeah. What In what way is Orion, Orion sorry, going to solve that issue? Are you going to work like for the retail? You want to have a beautiful user interface and user experience, right? So, um. I mean, user experience is obviously a critical one for adoption because crypto will have succeeded in market penetration when it becomes such utility that hardly anyone really realizes they're using it. And I think it's no surprise that Coinbase was obviously the first exchange to go public with probably the most user-friendly interface in market. And you know, we've seen a huge growth of swap pools and just really simplifying the user experience, removing that friction and removing the number of steps that an action takes. And I think that critically is what's going to bring new users into the space at this time. And so something that I'm really personally excited about is a project that's actually building on Orion protocol called Bonsai. So it's a, a DeFi AI assistant that will connect to the entire market via Orion terminal. So you could say, you know, I want to send at Timothea 10 BTC and, you know, via voice or text command, and it will pop up with your approval, let you know the, kind of the transaction costs and everything like that. And you, you press send and off you go. So I think that, you know, while we, I think we have built an intuitive interface, so that, as you said, there's still an understanding you know, some level of understanding required to connect your wallet, deposit funds into a smart contract, and um, uh, you know, using a, like a, a decentralized aggregator or exchange is not as quite as simple as using a, a centralized one. So, to combat this, I think this is a, a really great step forward. Not just bringing people into crypto, but kind of bringing um, like bringing crypto into the way that people transact normally and, and kind of interact. With their phone yeah i mean i guess uh, if we want to have mass adoption we want to make it as simple as what we have in the traditional financial markets right now because yeah. um like for instance coinbase and some european exchanges they are very user friendly it's easy to use them however they don't have those complex DeFi systems that everybody is seeking for right now mm -hmm. as in the DeFi market is currently heavily focused on getting the highest api and then rook pull everyone um, yeah. <laughs> or get everything through uh, farming pools or whatever. Um, yeah. Do you believe that that's going to stay here? Or mm -hmm. do you believe that we're actually going to build a DeFi system that we need instead of all those scams? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. Because really, last year was the year that yield farming became synonymous with DeFi. And I think it's a shame because despite you know how broad and promising and you know comprehensive the concept of decentralized finance truly is i feel like it was reduced last year to, to food and you know stupidly inflationary yield farming so but I, I think it's quite strange because i think so many of us in the space you know look at the federal reserve printing 35 percent of, of all dollars in existence in 10 months and 
and look to this industry as, as an alternative to an increasingly unsustainable system. But, you know, with, with these unsustainable inflationary APYs, we, you know, surely we're at risk of going down a kind of similar path there. It, it is a zero sum game and you can't just inflate supply forever and, and expect it to still be profitable or sustainable. And for us, sustainability is a really important thing, not just for our, for our token, but our protocol and the wider industry as well. So for our staking model, instead of, you know, unlike other inflationary staking models, we don't mint new tokens for rewards. Our, our ORN is supply capped at 100 million, and although it will never actually reach that due to removing it from circulation. Um, but instead, all staking awards are generated through transaction fees on the protocol. So, so far we've only spoken really about Orion Terminal, but Orion Terminal is just one solution built on our liquidity aggregator. We actually have 12, yes, I, I, honestly, new ones coming every week. Um, we have 12 solutions currently in the works um, and they total 18 revenue streams. And you know why this is important, because someone might be being like, you know, why do I care about your revenue streams as a company? It's not just about our sustainability, but every revenue stream, every product feeds into the staking rewards for the end user. Because, you know, for example, we have products like a liquidity boost plugin, which is being used by Coty. And in that in that example, every single transaction on Coty X via Orion Liquidity results in a transaction on our protocol and will, um, you know, comes with transactional fees and will therefore reward users for that. So we have about 60 partners, again, new ones coming out every day. Um, and, and 20 of those are actual kind of clients for our, for our liquidity solutions, all of which, like, if you think about how, how vast that could be, like poker start at poker markets, all of the transactions on those platforms will be generating staking awards for ORN holders. So I think it's a pretty, pretty exciting time. So. Well, it's, it's, it's like, uh, I mean, if you can give back to the end user, that's literally how you generate value to your pro project or to, to the actual user. As right now with blockchain, you try to make value out of everything or at least um, monetize that value. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to achieve. Then we've discussed the overall liquidity provider that Orion is trying to achieve. But as you mentioned, you are building an ecosystem or Orion is building an ecosystem. Yeah. What do you think the retail user or user needs more on the platform as one of the features that you have is portfolio management, but also margin trading. Not quite sure whether people should actually need that. But yeah. uh, what, what do you believe should be integrated if you want to become that all around decentralized platform? Well, I think ultimately it's not on me to decide what the most important thing for a trader is, um, nor, nor, you know, nor us as a business. What we are doing is providing that choice. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have, we, our brokers are like Injective, MetalX, MXC, Bitmax and, and others. So, you know, with working with someone like with Metalex, for example, I used this example the other day, you'll be able to trade Bitcoin for butter. So it's like, I mean, not not the kind of most sought after trade pair, but it's. I think it's about giving users options to transact in the way that they want. And that's also fed into our integration of multiple chains. We, uh, we are building on Cardano, Polkadot, Phantom, Elrond, Avalanche, Hobie Echo Chain, Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, and others, you know, still that we're working on to be announced. So, I mean, all of this obviously is focusing on our scalability and our interoperability, but ultimately it's about providing the end user the, the choice to transact and to, to interact with the crypto space in the way that they, that they want to. And also ensuring that it's protected at all times and that they can retain ownership of their funds well so, um, didn't, didn't really answer the question but <laughs> no i get the point that's 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 the thing here um what i can also understand is that there's also a bunch of people that have 
that want to use OTC, especially institutional investors, but also big retail investors, they literally can't use the sex or decks because of less lack of liquidity. Yeah. Um, could they be integrated with the Orion protocol as well? How are you fast facilitating that to them? As in, um, there probably are also regulatory uh, frameworks that you have to build for them. Um, what are you doing or what is Orion doing with that perspective or that group of investors? I guess there's two, level, two, two, two kind of layers to it. The, you know, the, the institutional crypto investors like, like market makers and, and, and things like that. So they're already using our, our platform for large order fulfillment, we call it, which enables them to transact large um you know, large quantities of assets strategically without the associated risks, preserving token price and, you know, preventing them from tanking the market. Um, but I think also just top line, liquidity in simple terms is just how easily an asset can be bought or sold without affecting the price. By aggregating all of that liquidity into one place, you're reducing the volatility, reducing the spread. And um, also in order to achieve the best price, orders are often filled by multiple brokers across multiple exchanges anyway. So, um, but beyond that into the kind of institutional, tr the traditional institutional players, which I think is critical for us to tap into for you know, expansion and, and sustainability as, as a business and as an industry, um, we're actually working with Alliance Block to create the, uh, the first kind of um, portal that's regulatory and compliant with first DeFi portal that's um, kind of regulated and compliant with that's to be used by wealth managers, fund managers. Um, so basically, you know, by, by doing so, the value of the traditional capital market is in excess of $100 trillion. Um, so there's a huge opportunity for us to unlock this massive latent pool of, of global liquidity. And so, uh, yeah, this is one of the projects that the partnerships that I'm really excited about, because if we can create these, if we can provide these wealth managers, these fund managers, a, a single compliant yet non-custodial point of access to the, the digital asset market, I think there's going to be, you know, a huge amount of capital that can come into the DeFi space. Yeah, I guess it's two ways. It's first of all... Um connecting it all for the end user as a retail user in the crypto space in general, and then connecting yeah. or making that bridge to the traditional markets. And that's exactly. what probably the entire space has to do right now. Otherwise, we will never have mass adoption. Yeah, um, You've been touching on this point as well, is that um, earlier on, everybody was working in silos. I mean, mm -hmm. Ethereum was the biggest platform back in the day, and now we have multiple ones connecting with each other. Um, What's the purpose of Orion in that case? Are you going to connect all those large blockchains? And mm -hmm. do you believe that that's going to be the future? And what do you think all those projects need to be connected to the terminal of Orion in general? So, yeah, I mean, firstly, you're, you are so right. I think so long blockchains are just kind of built in a, in a vacuum. You know, dev teams creating their own protocols with their own consensus algorithms and, and validator pools and, and, and everything. And, and we talk so much at the moment about interoperability, but I think we are so far from a state of, sort of full interoperability as an industry, because the space is still too siloed from, from kind of from multiple levels, the, from an asset level, from an exchange level, and, and from a blockchain level, perhaps most critically. Um, so yeah, our goal as a chain agnostic aggregator is to build on really every every chain that adds value. It's not necessarily every single chain in market, but um, you know, naturally right now, our focus is on the larger blockchains, the more developed blockchains, the ones that can enable us to scale quicker and, and larger and bring the most immediate value to the end user. So at the moment, we, like, we focused on uh, chains with an EVM for speed to market because our you know, base protocol is, is Ethereum. But we are also working with Elrond and Cardano on, on their actual native chains as well. So for the chain themselves, this brings uh, you know, a significant amount of transactions to their network. Um, for example, we're going to be the first liquidity aggregator that's actually built on Cardano. Um, and we're also working 
with them on developing an NFT aggregator too. So it's kind of a um, a win-win for kind of everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. But, um, yeah, so kind of it's a win-win for the win-win-win for the, the blockchain um, R protocol and, and the end user by you know, providing this freedom and scalability. Well, I've, I've, I've asked this question previously with a different uh, interview as well, is that right now we moved from silos to interoperability mm-hmm. in which uh, we want to connect all the blockchains with each other coming from the fact that Ether has scalability issues. Mm-hmm. What, what do you believe is going to happen once Ether is going to solve those issues or at least tries to solve those issues? Might we swap back to Ethereum entirely and just erase all the other platforms or, or did we skip that entire stage? Um, it's, a, it's a difficult question. I think, um, you know, as I said, with, with, the, with an EVM, it's kind of, we've got a really simple and easy port of, um, sort of onboarding different codes from different chains. So I struggle to see how the removal of, of, of um, Ethereum would work in its entirety, um, but I don't know. There's, there's, we're still in in our infancy as a space. So you know, who's to say that someone else? I mean, everyone's trying to build the next ETH killer, right? So who's to say yeah. that? <laughs> that Heard it before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, there are a lot of incredible projects out there that are trying to solve that. So um, just because it's it's the standard for right now doesn't mean it necessarily will be going forward. So I'll be you know, intrigued to see how that would work. But I do appreciate it's going to be a very hard job to kind of transfer pretty much everything that's, <laughs> that's currently on Ethereum over to another blockchain. Well, I mean, right now we are seeing that, that it's getting spread out on all those different pl- platforms, Polkadot, mm-hmm. Cardano, um, cosmos those are all being built because ethereum can't really scale up at this stage mm-hmm. um, and the question really is right now we're seeing that wave or are we going back to ether at some stage when ETH to solve those issues that's pretty much that could that could literally kill all those projects however the word krill is being used by all the people holding the actual token is that's the hooliganism yeah. that we have in crypto <laughs> um but as you have been mentioning um, also that you're currently partnering up a lot and every day there's new partnerships coming out. Mm. What can we, can we expect from Orion in the near future? As in, what's the current targets for the roadmap of Orion? Has the mainnet just launched that also mm. gathered a lot of hype? Um, yep. What's next? Well, so yeah, our, our biggest focus up until now has been our, our mainnet. So um really proud to say that just a couple of weeks in now we're seeing around 30 million daily transaction volume which you know um i think that, that puts us somewhere around top top 20s somewhere in a matter of weeks and if you look at where uniswap was you know two three weeks in it's about three thousand finance about eight million and even sushi swap in the heat you know, like the heat of DeFi summer was you know, around eight eight to ten or something two weeks in so uh, i think we've achieved a lot but as i said volume is hugely important to our ecosystem and, and to our staking and our next kind of um, milestone is launching our main net staking so um in order to do that though we need to continue to drive volume to the terminal and that is not just through uh, volume to the protocol and that's not just through our our terminal but through all of our b2b products as well so we have our you know liquidity boost plugin coming up relatively soon or launch pad liquidity solution um and on top of that our kind of our other major milestones are our, our nft aggregator as i said we're, we're working with cardano and also hobie uh, echo chain on that and and to the terminal itself we want to expand the offering just beyond um you know, beyond what it is today by introducing lending, margin trading, um, you know, uh, leveraged ETFs, <laughs> decentralized copying, um, staking of any digital asset type. We just, we essentially want to become the portal for crypto. Um, so a lot 
yeah, a lot planned in our roadmap. I think the most, the thing that people are most looking forward to is most likely the staking because, um, you know, because the, the volume that we could be driving to the platform through all of our partners is so expansive, the, the staking rewards could, you know, by the time that we release it, we want the staking rewards to be, you know, incredible, essentially. So um, that's our, our next, our next biggest milestone. I mean, I guess the staking will be high if there is literally no uses, but like more users that are coming in, the more stable it would become, the more sustainable the ecosystem will become as well, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously the APY will go down um, in in relation to you know, more users coming on board, more being staked and everything. So, um, but I think it will find that obviously that equilibrium and, um, you know, at the end goal, having a huge amount of ORN locked up in, in staking as well so which of benefit benefits one harder too <laughs> okay. well i've got an uh, ethical question that i have to ask and i just it just came up during the interview is that you've got volume and you've got volume mm -hmm. why i say it like that is that um there's a real volume and there's tons of exchanges that put volume out there that's fake mm -hmm. What's your opinion on that and how are you going to balance that out? Because you can just create fake volume to get up in the list and then to get more clients to your platform, right? Yeah. I mean, I think people can see through that for the most part. I'm not going to name the names, but I think we all know. Yes, who's... yes, please do. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I mean, you can, you, it, there's, I mean, everything's public, isn't it? Everything's visible. There's ways to work out what's real and what's not. Um, you know, it wouldn't benefit us to to ramp up our volume, um, you know, to, to fake our volume, because then we have to pay up extraordinary amounts of staking rewards on volume that we're not even earning transactional fees on. So it would be a hugely costly exercise for us to for us to do. Um, but I think, yeah, for, for the most part, people can see through those lists, because if you look at the top ones, you can see there's like four assets on there and like five five thousand daily visitors but yet five billion daily volume it doesn't add up and and people in this industry are, are for the most part very savvy and can you know are able to to see through that so um it causes a bit of hype doesn't it those kind of people they get mentioned in the news for for a week and everyone's talking about it but what what happens after that yeah you know? Everything just moves on, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um. Another topic that I wanted to address is that um, the DeFi industry, also uh, the sex uh, exchange in itself, lots of hacks are happening. But in the DeFi industry, lots of rug pulls, exploits, scams, etc., are happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does Orion Protocol protect itself from that threat? To be honest. So a couple of different layers there. One from the centralized uh, exchange hacks of you know we are decentralized but we do pull liquidity from centralized exchanges so we have a number of insurance partners that we're working with uh, poker cover bridge mutual uh, insured finance so poker cover for example will protect users for the for the funds um used in trading if for example they're currently making a trade on binance via orion terminal and binance gets hacked they are protected um you know, people, uh, entities like Bridge Mutual and Insured also protect against rug pulls. So we are doing everything we can to kind of bolster our security and protection on the terminal. You know, with three different insurance offerings so far uh, to protect against you know, rug pulls and um, and also you know any um, any kind of smart contract exploits, anything like that. Users, you know, any unlikely occurrence, uh, users are protected. All right. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, that something that we really need into the space as there are so many hurdles still to take. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, I've got a final question to, uh, to ask you. I do that to everyone that's coming okay. into the interviews is if you are 40 years older from now, mm -hmm. what, what will make you happy? What's your purpose in life? If you watch back to your entire life, what is what you're trying to achieve right now? Wow. Yeah, that it's a complex one. 
Yeah, go ahead. Just give me a minute. <laughs> we'll have um, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I suppose really the goal of, 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 of working on anything so vast and comprehensive is really being able to, to look back in a few years and, and say, wow, we were part of something that changed the face of X, whatever that X may be. And I'm really, truly, you know, the, the workload is in, insane, but I wouldn't have it any other way because I'm so grateful and, and happy to have found kind of a place at Orion because I feel like what we are building is truly revolutionary and will change the, the, the face of trading. And so I suppose, yeah, looking back in, in 40 years, I, I've been be very proud of, you know, what, what we have achieved. Um, so. Well, you said it briefly in the beginning, and I didn't want to touch it, but you said that there might be a chance that blockchain will not be that big because some people don't want it to become big. Could you maybe address that still? <laughs> Oh no! So I was talking. I was referring to when we, when I was working at Telefonica, and we were mm -hmm. looking at blockchain to uh, to be used in the ad tech industry. So um, the ad tech industry is so opaque, and from you know, from an ad going from the client through to the end user, there's about you know, twenty people involved in that that chain, um, all kind of different different entities that are that have agreements with each other. There's no transparency in terms of costs and, and you know, kickbacks and things like that. So unless you had an end-to-end -end player like Google, for example, or, or Amazon introducing that end-to-end, -end, it would be really difficult to introduce into the ad tech space purely because people are profiting off of the lack of transparency in the space. So it's not to say that it, it wouldn't be good for the space. It's just to say that I, I think, um, they don't want transparency in 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 ad tech <laughs> so well some groups of people don't want transparency yeah, exactly, i'm not gonna yeah. name those but um yeah I, I can i can think about some of them um well thank you very much and the final question i'm going to ask is where can we find orion where can we find you mm -hmm. is there anything that you still want to add to this conversation I think we covered quite a lot. Um, I would say, you know, most important things to take into. Um, sorry, I got distracted by something going on there. Really sorry about that. Um, so, uh, yes, so you can find us on orionprotocol.io. Would love for your viewers to actually trade on Orion Terminal. Uh, so that would be trade.orionprotocol.io. And you, we have an incredible community, really engaged informed and we are pretty active on twitter just at um, orion underscore protocol and on telegram as well so that's just at orion protocol so um yeah would love for would love for your viewers to join the community ask any questions that they may have i appreciate that you know orion does a lot in, in the year you know in the year since we've launched we've added so many new solutions so it is really important to us to keep our, our content up to date. We have a really regularly updated blog pretty much every day that you can learn more about Orion on. So that is just blog.orionprotocol.io. Um, so, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for uh, for being here once again. And I'm wishing thank you, you all me. the best in the blockchain space thank, and thank uh, so with much. Orion. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cool. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.